Good morning. I have a very interesting case today and we will review the history and review the investigations. So let's get started here. This is a this is the story of a 17-year-old man who I had seen a number of years ago. His seizures began around 1 year of age and he began having seizures since that time. Seizures would typically present with jerking on the left side of his body. On my initial examination he had left hemiparesis. Now something to keep in mind when you are examining somebody with a history of seizures or epilepsy you go beyond the regular neurological examination. I mean although it's still part of the neurological examination there are certain specific things that you can check for in patients with epilepsy. So there are patients who have neurocutaneous syndromes and you're looking for cafe au lait spots, you're looking for hypopigmented lesions. But if somebody has a history of seizures that typically affect one side of the body and especially if it has been occurring since early childhood, you may consider comparing the size of the nails between the left hand and the right hand. I specifically look at the size of the thumb nail and see if there is an asymmetry. So in this patient, the nails on the left hand were significantly smaller as compared to the right side. The size of his left hand was also smaller than the right side. And the left foot, in fact, was also smaller than the right side. And he had to be fitted with special shoes because if you bought, if they bought regular shoes from any shoe store, those would not fit on both feet. So he had to have tailored shoes made for himself. So those are some clues to keep in mind that may help you lateralize where the lesion, where the epileptogenic lesion is. He had an initial EEG and CT scan of the head that was reported as normal. Uh, when I saw him for the first time, I did not have access to the actual films. It was just a report saying that the CT scan was normal. So I requested an EEG and an MRI of the brain. I like to look at my own EEGs and I like to look at my own MRIs as well. I mean, I trust the neuroradiologist, but I do like having a second peek on those images. So in this tutorial, I will review his history and investigations, followed by some clinical pearls at the end of the session. So let's move on. When you're looking at the MRI of uh, anyone, whether it's epilepsy or any other pathology, it's important to have a systematic approach how you look at the images. So normally what I would do is I would look at the sagittal sections and specifically look at the periinsular region to see if there are any migrational disorder. In this case, you can see these multiple tiny gyri. So these are these don't look normal. So this is what is called polymicrogyria. Poly because there are many micro because those are smaller than what you would see in a regular or a normal person. And of course, these are gyri, so you call them polymicrogyria. And you look for these polymicrogyria or other migrational disorder in the different planes. So this is the sagittal plane. And we are also looking over here. This is another slide. You can see all these tiny microgyria. If you start and look systematically, if you have thin cuts, you are able to identify those. This is the axial section. Compare the gyri on the left hemisphere. Excuse me. Compare the gyri on the left hemisphere here with those on the right side. So you see some atrophy here. You see microgyri here. You also have some areas of dysplasia here. And this is what accounted for the asymmetry in the size of his hands and asymmetry in, in the size of the nails when you have that involving the motor area, the regular motor, uh, the arms co corresponding, the limbs corresponding to those motor areas do not necessarily develop normally. This is another one. Compare, just look in the frontal areas, compare these jara here with these micro jara here, poly micro jara here. And this is a coronal image. It's very obvious here. Compare the left side and compare the right side. So this is this appears more like normal jara and sulci. This is what appears like a poly micro jara. So poly micro gyria is a migrational disorder often but not always 
associated with epilepsy. It was good that we repeated the EG. This is, if you look at this very first page, you can see, look at the channels from the left hemisphere and then compare it with channels from the right hemisphere. You can see a posterior dominant alpha rhythm, a very nice posterior dominant alpha rhythm. These are eye blink artifacts right here. The ECG is not optimal, but there are some muscle artifact at the very end of this page. So just looking at this page, this EEG appears normal and it's possible that the last EEG did not capture any pathology because the sample that was collected did not have the abnormality. Now we go to the next page here and you can see the abnormality here. Pause the video and see if you're able to identify it. Well, if you can't, let me highlight it for you. So if you look at the right channels that end with the even number, so that is the channels that are recording from the right side of the brain, you can see a slowing and some sharp morphology, sharply contoured waveforms in the right hemisphere. The ECG here appears pretty regular. So if you undersample an EG, you may get a normal EG or you may get an abnormal EG. But just because your first sample did not show an abnormality does not mean that you stop right there. Uh, the EG that I requested in this patient was an ambulatory 24-hour EG. And the reason I requested that was later when I saw him, he was living by himself. And it is always possible, he told me that he was seizure-free at that time, but it is always possible that a patient may be unaware of his unawareness. So it's important to uh, consider either getting a witness's account, and if you don't have it, repeating an EG or getting a longer sample definitely helps. This is another EG looking at the average reference montage, and you can identify some sharply contoured waveforms at P4 right here. Now, are you able to identify the state of this patient? When I say state of the patient, are you able to say whether this patient is awake or asleep? So first of all, you do not have a, as much muscle artifact as you saw in some of the earlier slides. So that is more suggestive of sleep. Number two, you do not see that posterior dominant alpha rhythm. Number three, you're starting to see some sleep spindles here. And what we see here is we have still have those some sharply contoured waveforms in the right side. In the frontal head region, what we see here, there is a possibility these could be just vertex waves. So I'm not absolutely certain that this has anything to do with his epilepsy or seizures, but he does have abnormality and pathology in the right parietal head region. This is another slide, and you're able to see some isolated asymmetries in the right parietal head region. This particular page, there are some sleep potentials mixed with slowing, so it's hard to say if there is anything epileptiform. This is not the optimal page. I should have cut down the gain on this uh, EG. On the ECG channel, you see some 60 cycle artifact. So something that can be removed by the notch filter. This is another page from sleep. What you see here, these are sleep spindles have shown up quite clearly. So if you see sleep spindles on the EG, those are the defining features of stage two sleep. These here, what you see on FP1 and FP2, and in fact also on CZ and FZ here, these I suspect are vertex waves and we still have some sharply contoured activity in the right parietal region, in the right posterior head region, which I think may be related to the pathology on his imaging. Yet another uh, page of sleep, and you're able to see the vertex waves here, which do not define any stage of sleep, but are seen in often in stage one and stage two of sleep. 
and you can see those in CZ head region as well. This is stage two sleep. And this is where the patient is awake. The EG again looks normal. The EG is reactive. On eye closure, the occipital dominant alpha rhythm becomes more prominent. So what did we learn from this, uh, this tutorial? Number one, the MRI of the brain provides a much better resolution than the CT scan and should be considered in all patients with focal seizures with a normal CT scan. I find that prolonged EEG increases the diagnostic yield. If on the very first EEG you are able to identify an abnormality, if you're able to classify the type of epilepsy just from one EEG, you don't necessarily always need to repeat the EEG. But if the EEGs have been reported normal, in increasing the sampling can help you get a better localization, better lat lateralization, and a better classification of the seizure types. I suggest trying to develop your own systematic approach in investigating seizures and having a hypothesis before ordering investigations. So if somebody has hemiparesis, if somebody has asymmetry in the size of the limbs, you have to consider some structural abnormality. Uh, CT scan usually is not enough. Getting a good quality MRI, often with a seizure protocol, will help you delineate the underlying pathology. So I will end here. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions or if you would like to discuss anything, please leave that in comments. I will hopefully try to put, on, put together another tutorial in a week or 10 days. Thank you so much.